Hello, in this video I'm going to do a quick comparison between the two Sigma Art Series Prime lenses, the 24mm f1.4 and the 28mm f1.4, specifically with astrophotography, landscape astrophotography, Milky Way photography in mind. So I'm going to go over some physical differences between those two lenses and then I'm going to show you some sample images, so you're going to see what kind of image quality you can expect in the center of the image and also more importantly on the edges of the image. So. Let's get started. Alright, so both of these lenses are actually very similar to each other. On the outside they are very similar. This one is the 28 1.4 and the Sigma 24 is very similar. They are all black, they have a large uh, focus ring, rubberized, very easy to turn, well damped and also the focus ring and the scale of the focus is really easy to kind of dial in your perfect focus for astrophotography. There's also a switch between AF and MF, so you can easily switch to MF and use that for astro. Uh, both of these two lenses will accept a traditional filter with the size of 77 millimeters on the front element of, of them, so you can use uh, NDs, polarizers or whatever you want to use. And then on the back, and here is the first difference, the Sigma 28 has a weather sealing gasket here on the back and the Sigma 24 doesn't have it. And this is a nice addition, the weather ceiling is a nice addition because if you do nighttime photography, maybe time lapses or something like this, oftentimes your gear will be soaked in condensation. So having this kind of an extra protection of the weather ceiling and the gasket on the back is definitely a plus from, for, the, for the Sigma 28. They both come with a lens hood and the lens hood on the Sigma 28 has this uh, design where it has a switch somewhere here there you go. There is a locking mechanism, so if you put it onto your lens, in order to take it off, you can't just twist it off, you actually need to uh, press this switch and then it turns uh, and you can take it off. There's also this rubberized part on the on the lens hood itself. I'm not really a fan of that because it only attracts dust that is hard to get off. And the Sigma 24 has a regular lens hood, the one that you can find on the 50mm for instance, all plastic, no rubber and no locking mechanism. I actually sold already my Sigma 24, which might be a little bit of a spoiler uh, for the conclusion of this video. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's also a quite substantial difference when it comes to the prices of these lenses because the 28 costs, um, the 28mm f1.4 from Sigma costs around $1400 and the 24 costs only around $800, $850. So it's a pretty big difference. The 28 is also heavier and longer. The 28, uh, the length of the 28 is 107 millimeters, whereas the 24 is 90 millimeters. So it's like nine centimeters versus 10.7. Not really that big of a difference, but you might, um, depending on what kind of bag do you use, you might consider it to be a deal breaker or not. Uh, it also weighs more, the 28 also weighs more. It weighs 865 grams, whereas the 24 weighs only the uh, 665. So it's like 200 grams of a difference. So again, it's a little bit heavier, not a deal breaker to me at all. Um, but yeah, it's more expensive, it's heavier. So is it worth the price and uh, you know the weight that you have to carry around? Is it reflected in the image quality? Yes, it is. So let's uh, hop into the computer and let me show you some sample images. Before we jump into the comparisons, actually, I wanted to show you the kind of a difference in framing that you can get, for instance, if you're shooting the Milky Way, because obviously the 28 is going to be a little bit tighter than the 24. So let's see what kind of a difference does it make when it's, you want to shoot um, the Milky Way. So here in Stellarium, I have a simulation and right now you're looking at the framing of the 28 on a full frame Canon EOS R. And as you can see, you can really nicely frame up the core region of the Milky Way uh, when it's kind of diagonally in, in spring and also a little bit of a foreground here. And with the 24, you would be looking at something like this. Uh, so again, 24, 28, 24, 28. I think the difference is not that, not that big. I, I used to enjoy shooting with a 24 and the Milky Way, but I think with the 28, there wouldn't be that much of a difference. And I think I actually kind of like it. I like when the Milky Way kind of fill, fills the frame nicely. 
and if you feel like it's a bit too tight you can always shoot a panorama or something like that so okay let me show you those examples all right so as you can see we have a comparison view here the image on the left has been shot with the sigma 24 and the image on the right has been shot with the sigma 28 millimeters and both of these these are portrait orientation mode images and we have the orion here uh, on the right is here and on the left is here just rising above the horizon both these images have been shot at f2 because especially with fast and very bright lenses it's always a good idea to stop them down at least one stop from the maximum aperture in order to maximize the image quality so this is exactly what i did and if we zoom in here you can see that the quality of the stars is pretty much the same uh, there is a little bit of a color difference which is fixable with white balance but the stars look pretty much the same on both of these lenses but if we go to the corners we can start to see a very very stark difference so in the very corner you can see on the 24 even at f2 which is not wide open you can see very strong astigmatism and and coma here on these stars it really looks kind of horrible and on the image on the right with the 28 we can still see a tiny bit of these especially on like brighter stars but on most of the stars especially those that are not as bright we can see virtually no astigmatism, which is really impressive. If we go to a to the second corner here on the right, you can see pretty much the same thing. We can see astigmatism on these stars, and here on this image, there is very very little astigmatism, if if none at all. Let's uh, take a look at um, a shot at f uh, 1.4, which is this one from the 24, and this one uh, this one from the 24, and this one from the 28. Um, and with 24, uh, sorry, with 1.4, if we zoom in again to the edges, uh, sorry, to the corners even, you can see again that at f1.4 there is a ton of astigmatism on the Sigma 24 mil, but on the 28 there is virtually no astigmatism at all. So I would conclude that for, uh, for astrophotography, specifically a landscape astro where you have wide field of view and you want to have as much uh, as uh, the best possible quality i would definitely highly recommend the sigma 28 millimeters f 1.4 as this is currently my go-to lens for these kind of shots and also if you are shooting like panoramas if you want to stitch a lot of files maybe a multi-row panorama having a lens that um performs very well on the edges and on the corners will make it easier for the stitching software to stitch those images together and if it stitches you're gonna have less artifacts because with a lot of astigmatism there's a risk that you you're going to see some weird star shapes at the at the stitching lines of a panorama so the sigma 28 highly highly recommended for astrophotography and guys that's basically it for me for this video i hope you find it helpful if you want to pick up any of these lenses links to them will be down below in the description and also while you are there consider subscribing to my channel because i will be posting a lot more uh, content with regards to photography astrophotography that kind of stuff also check out uh, the content i already have on my channel i have a bunch of videos so maybe you'll like some of them and if you enjoyed that particular video please give a like down below i would really appreciate it and it helps me position in the youtube algorithm which i will be eternally grateful for so hopefully see you in one of my next videos and until then clear skies and bye bye